All right, ladies and gentlemen, in this video, I want to discuss the three most important things you need to know about the unit circle. The first one is to know how to memorize the unit circle, but not really memorize the unit circle, really just go ahead and memorize that first quadrant. So we've been working through this series of videos of building up our understanding on the unit circle. And you might actually have a pretty good idea of those points in the quadrant. If you've been doing the work that I've been providing you, I bet you already have a good firm understanding of that. However, we all know when a test comes up, what happens? Everything that we've remembered, everything that we've been doing goes out the window and we completely forget what we were supposed to do. Or we just make a stupid mistake and we flip the 30 degree and the 60 degree um, coordinate points, square root of three over two and one half, we flip them around and then we get the problem completely wrong. So we don't want that to happen. So let's just do a quick little way for us to remember where the points kind of go on that first quadrant. Because even if you take a test, you can maybe rewrite this down really, really quickly. So this is always what I tell students to do. So number one is to know the first quadrant. So how can you remember this very, very quickly? Well, what I always do is I say, all right, come on. I want to draw an, oh, dang it. I want to draw a nice line. Not one of these squabbles. All right, so we have this. We have that line and then we say, all right, we know from there to there, right? And so we know this coordinate point, hopefully that's gonna be zero comma one. We know this point is going to be one comma zero. Now we know there's gonna be three points, one, two, three. And remember, we're gonna be dealing with radians, but I'll do them for this one in radians and degrees. So therefore you can just kind of remember, cause they can sometimes be tricky. So this first angle, remember, is going to be a pi over six, right? Because that's the smallest way we broke it off, which is also equivalent to 30 degrees. This one is going to be half of 90, right? Because remember, this is 90 degrees. So half of 90 or half of pi halves is going to be a pi over four, which is equivalent to 45 degrees. This angle is going to be what we've broken to third. So that's going to be a pi over three which is equivalent to 60 degrees. And then we know this one is, again, that is your pi halves, which is equal to 90 degrees, okay? And again, if you if you struggle with that, again, where these come up with, just go and check out, again, the previous videos. We talked about this, how we went ahead and created that. So when we're looking into what are the coordinate points or how to remember what the coordinate points are, there's really a easy way to kind of think about that, all right? Um, all we simply need to do is know that they're all going to be fractions. So you can create them just like this, all with some fractions. Now, technically in this one, if you know this is going to be um, a, that's a, yeah, the one comma zero sort of thing. Um, so they're all gonna be fractions and guess what they all have as their denominator? A two, so two, two. So just put a two in the denominator. They all have a two in their denominator. Then all we're simply gonna do is start from the top here and you're just gonna do one, two, three. Then we go back and reverse. One, two, three, okay? Then the last thing you need to remember is they all have a square root of their numerators. But the square root of one, ladies and gentlemen, is just simply one. But then we have a square root of two, square root of three, square root of one. I'm sorry, well, I'm not gonna write square root of one because we just know it's one. So we have one square root of two, square root of three, and voila, we got the unit circle quickly, right? So make sure you guys have those, put it on whatever you need to. You need to know those corner points and you also need to understand how they relate or how those angles are represented. Because now if we know that first quadrant, how to memorize the unit circle, remember what I talked about, it's all just reflections, okay? So that's gonna come into number two is understanding what we call the reference angle. Now. If you already know what the reference angle is, then you're already gonna know the answer to this question. But let's go and take a look at three angles. And I want you to think about, um, or I want you to you know, write down or say to yourself, what do these angles all have in common? So these angles are going to be a pi over three, a two pi over three, a four pi over three, and a five pi over three. 
Now, I don't think in the previous video I mentioned the word reference angle. So you might, if you don't know what reference angle is, you might not know the answer. But there's something that these all have in common. Now, you might say they all have pi in common, and they all have three in the denominator in common, and that is correct. But if we look at these from a graphical approach, there's actually something that I really, really want you to understand. And that is going to be their reference angles are all exactly the same. So you might say, if you don't know what the reference angle is, you say, Mr. McLaughlin, well, what is the reference angle? The reference angle is the positive dip distance from your terminal side of your angle to the x-axis. Now we denote that here as theta prime. So that reference angle is pi over three. And then if I go ahead and graph two pi over three, I'm assuming you have some good foundation here of graphing your angles. You know two pi over three is like right there. But again, how far is this from the x-axis? You can say, oh, well, Mr. McLogan, that is going to be again equal to pi over three right? Theta prime equals pi over three. Because again, if you add another pi over three, that'd be three pi over three, which would be half of a circle, which again would be pi. So you can see how we're all good there. And then just because we're going with this um, routine here, I'm going to graph all the angles. So we had what, four pi over three. So that angle is going to be down here. And again, hopefully it makes sense that this reference angle is a, a is again also a pi over three because ladies and gentlemen if halfway around circles three pi over three and i add one more pi over three i can say the distance from the terminal side to the x-axis is again a pi over three and then last but not least is going to be five pi over three which that is going to have an angle like right around here and again that makes sense because pi over three would take you to six pi over three which would be two pi Okay, so Mr. McGlogan, what the heck is so important about the reference angle? I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, this is like the holy grail of what you need to know with the unit circle. Because if you remember about my video when I when we were building out to the quadrants of the unit circle, I want you to understand something about these points. These points are all reflections of each other, right? Pi over three and two pi, and this two pi over three and two pi over three are just reflections about cross the y-axis. Um, same thing with four pi over three and five pi over three. They're just reflections upon each other. So why that's so important is because let's th if you know what the reference angle is, then you know what those coordinate points are, are going to be. Because if I say, if I look at this, um, well, actually, let's just kind of look at these points. This coordinate point, if you look at, go ahead in the unit circle, that one's going to be a, um, pi over three, so that's a one half comma square root of three over two. Over this one is going to be a negative one half square root of three over two. Down over here, we're going to be dealing with a negative one half, ah, negative one half, uh, negative square root of three over two. And then over here, we're dealing with a positive one half, positive square root of three over two. And the reason why this is so important is because if I think about my reference angle of pi over three, what is the coordinate point for pi over three? That coordinate point is again, one half square root of three over two. So if you know what the reference angle is, then all you know, then you, then if you know the reference angle of an angle, then you know what those coordinate points are going to be, right? This coordinate point is one half square root of three over two. All these points have the same reference angle. They all have the same values, plus or minus. So all you simply need to do when you are given an angle and you need to graph it or find the that or find the points in the unit circle, identify the reference angle. Then once you identify the reference angle, those are the coordinates that you're going to be working with, plus or minus. The plus or minus all comes into understanding which um, quadrant you're in, right? First quadrant, everything's positive. Second quadrant, only the x-coordinate's positive. Third quadrant, X and Y are both negative. And the fourth quadrant, the Y coordinate is going to be negative. But if you know your reference angle, you found what the coordinates are going to be. So when you're given an angle, you need to go and identify what the reference angle is. That's gonna give you the coordinates. And again, you need to know this first quadrant to understand what the quadrants are gonna be for that reference angle, okay? 
Now, another one that comes into for more complicated angles is going to be the third thing that is most important for you to understand is going to be coterminal angles. So coterminal angles are going to be angles that have the same initial and terminal side, but that doesn't mean they are exactly the same angle. So for instance, if I took the angle, uh, let's say this angle right here, and I said pi over three, you can see that the initial side is right here and the terminal side is right there. So this angle is pi over three. Now, watch what happens if I do this. Do, does this angle still have the same initial and terminal side? If I go all the way to that way. Now this angle is going to be in the negative direction, right? So this angle is a negative five pi over three. However, did we start at the same spot? Yes. Did we end at the same spot? Yes. So these two angles are what we call coterminal. And then I could do a third one here um, is, well, what about if I did this? You say, ooh, that's kind of a weird angle, right? I went around the circle once, and then I'm about to go around the circle twice, but then I stopped, right? So all the way around the circle would be six pi over three. Around again would be a 12 pi over three, but I'm a little bit short, so this is actually an angle of 11 pi over three. But again, it's coterminal, so that's why that's so important. Now, the thing that I want you to understand about this coterminal angle, especially in, in, this, re in this problem, because this is where it comes into when we are graphing problems, is when I graph this, I did a full rotation all the way around the circle, right? So I go all the way around here once. I'm just back to where I started again, right? So couldn't you say like that was just an extra revolution? It didn't matter. And that's why I want you, that's why I want you to kind of see here. If I did 11 pi over three, I can rewrite that as a six pi over three, which would be a rotation all the way around the circle, plus a five pi over three. Now again, six pi over three was just redundant. I just went around the circle one time, and but then I had to graph the five pi over three, right? So when you're looking into graphing them, what you can do is you can identify your coterminal angles, identify these extra peer, these extra revolutions, don't worry about them, and then just focus on the five pi over three. So that's technically what we call using period as an aid. Get rid of extra rotations, and then just focus on what your typical remainder would be in that circumstance. So um, those are the three things that I want you to be able to focus on in the practice that I have for you down below is to kind of not just kind of go off of like regurgitating um, information, but now where I really want you to start applying the methods of what I taught in the previous video of how to graph with radians. But now here, really trying to systematically do this quicker because when we're identifying and following the unit circle, it's all about speed. We don't want to be spending time graphing a huge, um, a huge graph and then trying to remember rewriting the unit circle. No, no, no. We need to be able to do this in a systematic and quick process. So that's why I really want you to focus on knowing that first quadrant, knowing how to identify the reference angle, knowing how to identify coterminal angles, knowing if it's a positive angle, if it's a negative angle, and let's get right into being able to quickly identify what those coordinate points are. That is the practice that I have for you in this video. And then in the next video, we're actually going to work on stuff that we're going to be doing in class, like evaluating trigonometric functions using the unit circle. But that will come up in the next video. I'll see you here.